the Philly Freeman, Philly Freedom Stars taking on the West Virginia Thunder. We are underway, and there's a long three-pointer right there. West Virginia cracks it good. That is Tyron McCutcheon out of Parkersburg South with the opening three ball. Joel Hillsman, Jonathan Hemingway, our final championship game today here in the PSB Tip-Off Classic right here on SUV TV. Joel, when you talk about quality programs here at Team PSB events, it really starts with West Virginia Thunder and the Philly Freedom Stars. These are two programs that have been with us over the years. Lots of talented prospects. We're going to get into uh, the heart of the rosters as we go on. But you mentioned Taryn McCutcheon just a moment ago, an Elite 60 prospect, 2016 grad, already given her verbal commit commitment to Michigan State and the Spartans, and you can see why with that long jumper. Aaliyah Stevens' shot is no good. Rebound hits the floor. They die for it. Thompson gets it. There's a long three off the window. Good. Summer Pierce with the three. Right back at you, another three here in this game. We've got three threes to start the game. That's Lexi Barrier, an elite 100 watch list player in the class of 2016, given her verbal commitment to Virginia Tech. One of the stock risers in 2014 last summer. And she's coming out here helping the Thunder to an early 6-3 lead. 14-29 to go in a substitution being made already and you know that's something that head coach Garner will do with the Philly Freedom Stars mass substitutions deep bench all that good stuff passes deflected broken away Thornton gets it down low shot is up it is no good uh, with the Twin Towers in there at the same time that is Brittany Garner and Andrea Lord There's a long, deep three, no good by Tyron McCutcheon. It'll be out of bounds, and it will still be West Virginia Thunder basketball. Now, I think we got a foul there. Courtney yep. Eisenman followed that shot, got fouled on it, going to go here and shoot a couple of free throws. Big time post matchup here, Joel, on the interior. We know Eisenman here at the, at the line, and of course on the other side you got Andrea Lloyd, and Brittany Garner on the interior. So look for that to be a key uh, development in this game. Wiseman with the miss. Garner got the rebound. Two minutes gone by, and into the forecourt come Philly Freeman Express. Work it around. They've got Sidney Wagner into the game. Shot up, no good. Rebound by Eisenman. Referees getting together and talking right here between the rings. 7-3, 13-45 to go. West Virginia Thunder in white and Philly Freedom in gray. And now we're going to come over and have a conversation. Both coaches want to know what's going on. Coach Scott Johnson leans in. And Coach Garner also wanted to lean in and see what they had going. All right. Nobody seems to be too upset, so I guess that's a good thing. Yep, yeah, it is. Thornton now holding it out high. high. Taya Thornton, and she goes down low, sweeping hook down there. No good by Gardner, was unable to do it. That was Lloyd, excuse me. been just an outstanding event once again. We've talked about it on previous broadcasts, Joel. Over 100 college coaches in the building, 150 teams with some of the best teams from around the nation here at the Tip-Off Classic. Long three is no good, and then a steal. A great steal in there by Harmon. The three was up, no good. Iceman on the glass. Iceman couldn't get it to follow. They fight for the rebound. It was taken away. Summer Pierce 
Had it taken away from her down there for Philly. And Harmon will be going to the free throw line for the West Virginia Thunder. So let's set the lineups now. Pierce, Summer Pierce, Wagner, Sidney Wagner, and Taya Thornton on the floor, along with Gardner and Lloyd. For the Thunder, Michelle Johnson is in. And at the free throw line right now is Shana, Shana Harmon. Iceman is in as well. And Tyron McCutcheon. Eight to three. We played just over three minutes here in this first half. Shayna Harmon, Taze Valley High, 5'8". A steal. Coming up with the steal is Tyron McCutcheon. McCutcheon with the fancy dribble. She comes into the forecourt. Kicks it up ahead now to Johnson. Ball was tipped, picked up by Iceman. Now McCutcheon has it. McCutcheon bounces it over to Johnson. Now back to McCutcheon. McCutcheon going to drive, stop, jumper, back iron, no good. Long rebound going to come down to the Philly Stars, and that'll be Julie Brongart. Brongart into the forecourt. Lloyd feeding Garner. Garner, power dribble, back out to Barngard. Barngard dropped it off. Pass was taken away and stolen. And now here comes Harmon. Harmon going to go all the way, left-hand dribble. Oh. She dumped it off with a pass. Layup in transition, Alexi Barrier. A timeout, West Virginia opens 10-3 with 12.07. What a play by Shayna Harmon. Looked like she was going to go with the spin move out of control. She knew exactly what she was doing. We got it right here on the instant replay on the SUV TV. She turns her back to the defense, blips it to Lexi Barrier for the two. Nifty dime work in the open floor in transition leads to a Philly Freedom Stars timeout. Go ahead and mention this about Shayna Harmon. As we've said before, 2016 graduate already given her verbal commitment to Akron. Has been an EVA camper several times in the past. Real skilled kid, plays on the wing. Shoots it pretty well. So Coach Scott Johnson dealing with a full deck of cards here with the Thunder. McCutcheon, Barrier, Harmon. Now you see his daughter Michelle Joseph, or excuse me, Michelle Johnson's checking into the lineup here. Number 12 and White Gabby Burr is checking in as well too. The talent does not stop here with West Virginia. Holding it out high is Gardner. Gardner puts it on the floor. Now going to attack. Nice spin move up. Oh, Wagner knows she'll go to the free throw line. Philly Freedom faithful over to our left, waiting to erupt. So now Sydney will go to the free throw line. 10 to 3. 11 49 to go. First half. Joel Hillsman, Jonathan Hemingway, glad to be here with you. The PSB tip off classic live from Swanee, Georgia, and the Swanee Sports Academy. First free throw is up and in good by Miss Wagner. That makes it 10 to 4. Second free throw falls in, living right, 10 to 5, 11.49. And now substitutions coming in. Lee will check in. You know, the thing that I love about the West Virginia Thunder organization, and we've said it before, and we've tracked them now for several years, is they are skilled kids, but they play within a system. As you see them sharing the basketball right here, this is exactly what we're talking about. Yeah, missed the shot now. Here's Stevens. Aaliyah Stevens on a leak out, layup, no in transition. Thornton, Summer Pierce with the shot, back up, no. She got foul, no call. Now here comes Harmon back this way. A bounce pass to Johnson. Johnson layup off the window, good. Rolled in for Melissa Johnson, her first hoop. And Harmon right there with another assist. And I like this between the two teammates, Harmon pointing to Johnson, each other acknowledging the other's uh, good work. They dump it down low, going down to the bigs, and it will be two shots coming up for Andrea Lloyd. Andrea Lloyd, 6'2", Lindenwood High School. 11.03 to go, 12 to 5, and Lloyd will get two free throws. Yeah, Andrea Lloyd, good-looking post player here. Uh, actually wrote an article on the Philly Freedom Stars last fall 
program review and it's posted on PeachStateBasketball.com. You can go and search the archives uh, for that review. Coach Garner uh, took some time with me, talked about uh, his team, his program, and he mentioned Lloyd and some of the schools that were recruiting, recruiting her. I would encourage all of you fans out there to go back and, and read that. There's a little bit of background on all of these kids that are out there on the court here today. 12 to seven. Nice floater coming down the lane. It rolls in down the lane in for West Virginia to Thunder. That's Casey Hall, her first hoop. I like Casey Hall a lot, shooting guard, real skilled kid. But as you can see, can put it on the deck and score on the move. Lloyd shot no good. Brongart gets the rebound. Now she tried to pass it, kicked off the knee. Harmon going to pick it up. Harmon for West Virginia moving his way, going left of the lane. Up, layup off the glass. It rolled off no good. They get the rebound, go back up, scoop no. Still another offensive rebound and an opportunity for the Thunder. Now putting it on the floor, crossing in the lane, shot up. It was bothered by Lee, and I think we've got a foul. Foul called on Lee. And that's Gabby Burris tracking down the offensive rebound. And, you know, the names here for West Virginia, I apologize if I keep uh, number 41 there, Gabby Burris. I apologize if I keep talking about all of these kids, you know, a little bit too much, but they've been to our EBA. Uh, basketball camps in the past, and we've gotten to know all of these kids pretty well. Gabby, a hard worker, just joined the Thunder organization uh, this year. You can see a forward, good-looking stroke. One of those versatile kids can play inside, rebound on the interior, but she can also step out to the perimeter, hit the jumper, handle, uh, do it all. Gabby Burris, 2017 prospect. Brongart has it, and there goes Thornton back to Braungart. Braungart driving and scooping layup. No, she'll go to the free throw line, though, and get two shots. Like Braungart's game a lot. You know, she really favors, you know, some of these West Virginia guards, you know, Casey Hall, you know, some of those type of players, skilled kid, can shoot it. And if, I, if my memory serves me correct, I believe Coach Garner told me she's a real, a real good student, you know, in the classroom, high academic kid as well. Lloyd goes out. Sequoia Matthews comes in. Second free throw by Braungart, no good. Now here nice comes West pass. Virginia running. Yeah, it was a beautiful pass. Off, missed on the layup though. Sidney Holloway tried to follow up with the rebound, unable to do it. Here comes Matthews now. Matthews between the rings, swings it over to the left. The Braun guard. Braun guard holding it on the right wing, kick it out high to Lee. Lee between the circles, being worked on by Holloway. Lee puts it on the floor with the right hand, going, driving. And she was fouled, and she'll be going to the free throw line. Good drive there by Sophia Lee, 2016 from Voorhees, New Jersey. Good length, good energy. Seen her on a Friday night and getting in there and mixing it up. Yeah. Did some did some intangible work. Little, little small things that, that don't I uh, what you say, all those things that don't show up in the in the box score. But and lost that one though. And certainly shows up on the scoreboard at the end of the game. You exactly. Know? You gotta have those type of players to uh, to make it work. Joni Crenshaw for Georgia has returned. Sitting on the coach's section in the baseline. Along with an assistant. Haven't seen Coach Caldwell or Coach Vanderveer since earlier of the heavyweight names. Alabama's still here. Ohio's here. South Providence. South Florida Atlantic. Akron assistant coaches here. Obviously, you know, checking in on their uh, verbal of Shana Harmon. I got to got to shout out Coach Terry Nooner from uh, Alabama. I like that guy a lot. Know, know him from his days in Kansas, maybe, maybe even before. But uh, good guy, good recruiter. I always like to see him on the trail. Kick it into the middle. They got, dump it down. That's Holloway. Holloway shot stuffed out of there. It was blocked. A good block in there by Brittany Garner. Now here comes Wagner. Sidney Wagner gives it over. There goes. Aaliyah Stevens, Stevens kicks it over. Wagner wanted to pull the three, they dump it back down low. There goes Gardner, turns it back, got fouled as she made her move. Now this is how Philly wants to play right here. They, 
for the first possession that I've seen in this game. They get the ball up quickly. They move it around quickly into the you know, perimeter spot, the perimeter spot, and then find Garner on the interior. That's the way they've got to play. They can't play slow and allow West Virginia to clog up those passing lanes. They've got to play quick so that Garner will have those angles to be able to score on the interior. Garner's first free throw is good. Second free throw is good. And let's see, West Virginia. Nope, a foul was called. 16 to 10, 843 to go. West Virginia in the white. They are winning over the Philly Freedom Stars who are in the gray. Thornton is back in for Philly at the guard spot number two. There's a turnover. Here comes Stevens. Stevens all the way. Stevens up, layup, off, no good. Got her own rebound, put it back up and in. Good. I like what Philly is doing right here. Extending the, the, the pressure defense, trapping. And look, it's paying off. Yeah, another steal. That's Thornton. Thornton to Braungart. Braungart flipped it up. No. Thornton put it back up. No, she got foul. Foul from behind, though. Foul on Gabby Burris. And you hear the Philly faithful beginning to get loud. Great job by the Philly Freedom Stars. Turning the momentum right here. 2-2-1 two, two, press, trapping as soon as they cross the half court line. That is the cardinal sin as a guard. You don't want to dribble it across the half line and then pick it up because guess what? You have just added two extra defenders onto the court. Yes, the line and the sideline. Yes, the half line and the sideline become the two worst enemies. But hats off to Coach Gardner and, and take this opportunity to, uh, to, to shout both of these guys out. Both of these uh, coaches, uh, Coach Johnson, Coach Gardner, both are members of CoachHemi.com. They get on there, they check out the X's and O's, and I'll be honest with you, I actually steal some of the stuff that Coach Scott Johnson runs with his offense, some of his flair stuff. I draw it up and I put it up on the site. So uh, hats off to these guys really being students of the game of basketball. And you know what I like about CoachHemi.com? You've got it broken down for all levels because at the end of the day, it is basketball. And I saw the recent edition of Golden State's playoff <laughs> offense. Yes, sir. Now here is Braungart. Her shot is no good. They tip and fight for it. Lexi Barrier going to come away with it. And now here comes McCutcheon. McCutcheon coming back this way, Terry McCutcheon. She's got Johnson with her. Take it. Going to swing it down low. There's like a pass. That. Man, good this ball movement. This is great, Joel. I'm telling you. McCutcheon missed Courtney running down the right-hand side. Uh, she was blinded, but she found Michelle. And just the unselfishness right there. West Virginia has a team full of stars, but they play very well together. You would never tell, you never could tell, you know, that one player is better than the other because they all share the ball so equally with one another. That's why you would like to say, uh, who had the hockey assist on that? Yeah. Oh, hockey assist in there. There's a long three, Bongarner, good. Julie Bongarner, a three ball. One guard. We've got ourselves a game, Air Joel, 18 to 17. Yes, we do. Under seven minutes to go, 6.55. Get it up ahead. Now here's McCutcheon. McCutcheon going to go all the way off the window. No, rebound is ripped down there. And here comes Philly. Here comes Wagner in transition. Wagner down the lane, kicks it over. Thornton, a three, short. Rebound coming down now. Here comes Harmon. And a foul on Thornton. She gave the foul. That was actually a pretty good foul right there. Yeah, it stopped no. that break. <laughs> Even if they... It's a good thing for, I think, for Philly that they did call it because if they hadn't called it, it was going to be a two-on-one break uh, regardless. Uh, but let's talk about this matchup right here. West Virginia very strong at the guard spots. We talked about that. Yep. You know, Harmon, McCutcheon, even Barrier, you know, played the guard spot. Courtney Eisenman in the middle. But if Philly has an advantage, it is when they play those two bigs together, they can have an advantage on the defensive glass and the offensive glass. Lexi Barrett recovers the bad pass. Now kicks it off. McCutcheon with the float. Shot up, no. And Philly's going to come away with it. That's Lloyd. Stevens to Lloyd. Now she holds it. Swings it over to the left. They kick it around. Wagner brings it back out. 
Out to the top to Thornton, 18-17. And Philly, guess what, looking to take the lead. Here goes Thornton on a drive to the hoop. Traveling violation. Good defense there by McCutcheon. Yes, very good defense. I, I think if there's one thing that is underrated about Tara McCutcheon, it's her athletic ability. You know, you, you see this, you know, a little red-headed girl out there running up and down the court, and you say, okay, well, she's a nice skill player. No, she's a very good athlete. Harmon's shot is short. Rebound hits the floor. McCutcheon comes away with it. Lexi Berry puts it on the floor with the left hand as she picks up a dribble. She just traveled, no call. A long three, McCutcheon off tip. Fight for the rebound, out of bounds. It will go to West Virginia, the Thunder in white. Give a lot of credit for Philly Freedom Stars for really battling in this game. The guards for Philly Freedom Stars are not outmatching this game. As you can see, they can definitely uh, play with anybody. Inbound, Hutchins, a three good out of the corner. A three ball, bang, 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 all three of them. Her second three of the contest, 21-17. A long shot, no good. Rebound, McCutcheon got the rebound, fell down, and her teammates run to her aid. And I've got to tell you, that three was all set up by the baseline out of bounds play that Coach Scott Johnson ran right there. I've been watching this baseline out of bounds, and what he's been doing is he's been running two post players in there, and we're going to see it right here, and he gets all three defenders to commit, and you leave the shooter wide open in the corner, and, and when you put a, a dead-eye shooter like McCutcheon right there, you know, that's really tough to guard. McCutcheon will walk it into the forecourt being picked up by Thornton. Driving down the lane, shot is up, count it, and the foul, a drive, a beautiful drive there, coming in for Kristen Mayo. Into the, off the bench and into the scorebook, 5-8 out of East Carter, Grayson, Kentucky. Kristen Mayo, and she's at the free throw line to shoot one, 23 to 17. So a little 5-0 spurt, this free throw will make it a 6-0 run since they cut it to one. Good. Three-point play the old-fashioned way for Miss Mayo, and the lead goes out to seven. It was just at one, a 6-0 run since they cut it to one. Dump it down low, Lloyd spins, shot is up, no. Substitutions now. Summer Pierce will go out and Brittany Garner will come in. Inbounding underneath their own basket. And that'll be Matthew. Matthews back out to Thornton. Thornton gonna attack down the lane, scooping it up, no. Harmon comes away with it. Here comes McCutcheon. McCutcheon gets it up ahead to Mayo. Mayo with the bounce pass. Beautiful ball movement on the break and an easy layup, Casey Hall. The ball movement, the ball sharing is very notable here for West Virginia. And a good finish there by Burris to be able to kind of take the contact, cock the ball back, and then be able to finish. Check it. I did give it to Casey Hall. It was Burris. 41 in white, not 11. So Matthews holds, now spins it over. There's a long three by Lloyd. Good. Talk about stretching the defense. You make them all the time. Man, it's going to be something. Yes, sir. You always you always hear that, you know, in the pro game, you know, of, of those post players that can step out and stretch the defense, pull the big player away from the bucket. That's what Lloyd can do right there. 26 to 20. This As this game, game tightened up. Yeah, Go ahead. Yeah, I was going to say, this game's not over by any means. It looked like West Virginia was on a roll and was going to run away with it. But give credit to the Philly Freedom Stars making play after play after play. Thornton, one hand pass to Lloyd. Lloyd picked up a dribble now, a long pass, a turnover, and the ball went just mere inches away from Coach Gardner, who didn't even look at it. Out of bounds, turnover by the Philly Freedom Stars. It'll go over to the West Virginia Thunder. Summer Pierce checks back in, and Thornton takes a seat. Stevens checks in as well, and now also in for Philly is Nia Mim. Long three-pointer, no good, and we've got a whistle, a loose ball foul. Nope, it hit the basket support. Yep. It's shaking, yep, hit the basket support. So we'll go over now. 
Summer Pierce and the Philly Freedom Stars. She walks it into the full court. They feed it to Lloyd in the paint. Lloyd stops, turns, puts it up. No, she's going to the free throw line. 26 to 20 with 3.09 to go. See the versatile skill set of Andrea Lloyd. Saw the three just a moment ago. Now she's posting up on the block. And she's a problem. And I, I tell you, having Courtney Eisenman out of the game is hurting Coach Scott Johnson's squad right now. They don't really have a lot of, they don't have depth at the post position. That's Garner, excuse me, 33. Excuse me, yes, that's Brittany Garner. Garner. Lloyd, 35. And I did know, I know that I said the other day that Philly uniforms were my favorite. They are. But you get those threes and those fives and those eights on those jerseys, it's a little tricky. But I, I do like their uniforms grandly. Hey, I, no knock in the Philly Freedom Stars jersey whatsoever, but something to be said about that simple West Virginia Thunder uniform, too. Oh, I like it. Oh, man, I like the Cincy Swiss uniforms they had today were very nice. And West Virginia bust out and got, which is a rarity, the names on the jerseys. Seen it a couple times today. Well, let me say this, too, from, from an exposure standpoint now. How useful is it to have the kid's name on the back of the jersey when you're a college coach? And, and, I, am, and I understand, like, that's not always – uh, it's not always possible, you know, from a travel exactly. coach standpoint. You know, it takes time. You know, it takes money to be able to do that. And heck, a lot of kids are moving and jumping from team to team. But that also says something about the Thunder's continuity. Exactly. They know in February who their core seven to eight players are going to be on their top team, that they can go ahead and print those, those names, and they're going to be with them all through the spring and summer. Yeah, it really does. And then just for the whole thing, just looking at those coaches, that, that's what you'll remember. Because at the end of the day, you may say, oh, I remember 15. Yeah. Or, or no, I'm Barrier, because that was the name that was on her shirt. Even though with Lexi Barrier, I guess that was a bad example, because her hair comes down and covers <laughs> the name. But either way, yeah. Matthew's going yeah, to the free throw line. Yeah, true. And sometimes with these books, you know, numbers get, you know, changed and mixed up and, and such. And if you got the name on the back of it, well, that's uh, – that helps. It does help. And I will apologize right now to any family member whose name I botched up. <laughs> seven, seven championship games today, four the other day. Hey, I'm just glad we got a roster. I can do the rest. I'm going to be here all summer. Peach State Basketball, CoachHemi.com, and SUV TV. Swinging on the left side, Braungart has it. And now she kicks it over and holds it high to Thornton. Thornton out between the rings, two and a half to go, 28 to 20 in the first half. Now, here goes Thornton down the lane, scooping mm -hmm. layup, good. A nice move, Taya Thornton. I'm a big fan of Thornton. Yes. I, I tell you, I saw a little bit of her at uh, the real deal in the Ville last year, seeing a lot of her now. Shot was blocked by Gardner, a late whistle, and the Philly crowd does not like it. It was a late whistle there, 28-22 with 2.18 to go. I thought the Philly Freedom Stars fans were going to come out of the out of the bleachers there for a moment. I love the fan support. So at the line now is Gabby Burns, and I will say it was a little late. Looked like it was a nice block. May have gotten it with the body from our vantage point, but looked right. like it was late. Yeah, from our, from our angle, it certainly looked clean, but we didn't have the angle of the official. Exactly. Free throw is up, and the free throw is good. And it should be noted that every official is being evaluated themselves on this court. So if it was a bad foul, guess what? They're going to hear about it from somebody other than the, uh, from the fans. Exactly. Yep, take it around. Here's Braungart. Braungart going to drive, and Barrier tried to take it away. Jump ball has been called. Coach Garner beside himself, he said, Hey, yeah, they're reaching in here, and that shouldn't be a jump ball. But, hey, this, you know, when you start talking about officiating and coaching and, and things like that, the good coaches find a way to focus on what they need to focus on, okay, which is making the right next play, making the next right adjustment, as you see uh, McCutcheon throw that ball out of bounds. Errant turnover. And, and you know, the inexperienced coaches will just stay on the officials and even make it a bigger problem than what it really is. Because let me tell you, 
I've never met an official that I actually like. <laughs> they all make bad calls in my opinion, but at the, at the end of the day, you have to focus on the game of basketball, make the, 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 the right next play, and when you do that, your kids generally tend to follow suit. 100 seconds left, Philly Freedom turned it over. They're trailing by eight, and a foul there off of the turnover. So in recap right now, it was 18 to 17. Philly had cut it to one. So since then, it is a 12-5 run. But Thornton will be going to the free throw line. She's working out her right knee and right ankle at the free throw line, and now she gets the ball and gets ready to go through the routine. And just to mention, we talked about the evaluation of the referees, and you said uh, the first ever in PSB tip-off classic history. You, you, she sees monitors over here. <laughs> Let me see the replay on that last shot. Let's see if it counted. Hey, and uh, just for the viewers at home to know, these officials are being evaluated uh, for Division II basketball, uh, the Peach Belt, and also the SEAC uh, conferences. The head of officials is here, and they're evaluating, and they're picking officials as to who they're going to hire during the year. So many of those games will have games on television, so that's actually a part of the evaluation uh, process. And the fact that we've got the SUV TV here, yeah, it kind of fit and worked. It surely did. Good ball movement and a pass right there in off the window. You mentioned it. Uh, Eisenman now is back into the game out of Upper Arlington at 6-3. Casey Hall picked up the steal. Miss the layup, and interesting turn of events. It had been the Philly Freedom Stars that were turning the pressure up on the Thunder. Now the Thunder say, hey, we can play that pressing style as well. And Philly has had a couple of empty trips here with, uh, down the stretch here in this quarter. Closing the quarter or closing the half. Bounce it over on the wing. They swing it back this way, back back and forth. Pump fake, oh, Stevens got hit in the air with the pump fake, a foul. So going to the free throw line will be Sidney Holloway, 5'10", out of Morgantown. Holloway, a new addition to this squad this year. You mentioned her, 5'10", Morgantown. Lefty, like her build. See the sweet stroke at the line, coming in finding her way with uh, Coach Scott Johnson and uh, this organization and doing a good job of, of being really a glue kid on either end of the floor. Free throw, no good. She split the free throws and they get the offensive rebound. Kick it back out now. Here's Casey Hall and now Hall was fouled and Summer P Pierce didn't like it. She didn't think she fouled her. Summer Pierce, 5'8", Timber Creek High School. So going to the free throw line now is Casey Hall. Hall's first free throw is good. It's 34 to 24, under a minute now, 55 and 7, 10 seconds to go. If you're Philly here, you've got to get a bucket before the half, okay? Try to get this thing under 10 points, make it manageable, get some momentum, feel good about yourself going into the halftime huddle. Here's Matthews. Matthews dribbling being worked on by Hall. Now over to Summer Pierce. Pierce now swings it over to Lloyd. Lloyd, the pass. Matthews, it went right through her hands. That right there is a mental breakdown. Just can't miss that pass. A careless turnover. I mean, you have to deal with so much from West Virginia and all the plays that they make, you can't shoot yourself in the foot right there. So here comes McCutcheon into the forecourt. Well, trying to. She's picked up immediately by Summer Pierce. Going baseline, easy, got it blocked from behind Lloyd. McCutcheon picks it up a long three, hit the front iron, no good. Pierce with it with 20 seconds. Pierce in the break, down the lane, Pierce Ooh. shot up, no, she'll shoot two. How did she have eyes in the back of her head right there as she was dribbling with her right? Uh, Shayna Harmon was coming up the right side to, to, to pick it out. She quickly moved it over to the left side and ends up drawing the foul. She turned on the Jets, too, when she got going. Pierce free throw, no good. Pierce will get one more. It is up and in good. So 
she's got four points. Hit her a three and now added that free throw. 13 seconds looking and Hall shot is up no good. Pierce got it with eight seconds. They get it, oh, got knocked out from behind. Did not see her coming from behind. Ryan Garner had it knocked away from her. Mim is in, so it's Garner, Mim, Pierce, Lloyd, and Lee on the floor to finish the half. There's Lloyd, Lloyd takes it and fires it a long three, no good, rebound. That's, when, that's Eisenman, and that is the end of the first half. 35 to 25 at the half of the PeachStateBasketball.com PSB tip-off classic right here on SUV. Sports Academy in Swanee, Georgia. Joel Hillsman joined by Jonathan Hemingway. It is PSB tip-off classic. We are getting ready to start the second half of our seventh and final championship here. And it is the Philly Freedom Stars taking on the West Virginia Thunder. West Virginia all in the white, and they have that 10-point lead. Second half adjustments. What do you see or do what do you think Philly needs to do to get back into this ballgame? I think it starts with handling the basketball, not making turnovers, and making sure that you go to your strengths. As you see a travel right here, unfortunately, to start this game. They are very good when they play fast and then play inside as well, too. And they're also good on the defensive end when they're able to keep West Virginia uh, out of rhythm with that full court pressure. So let's see Brittany Garner favoring a right ankle, thinks she's going to try to run, run it off and stay in the game. She will. So it's Thornton, Pierce, Stevens, Lloyd, and Garner into the contest to start here for Philly Freedom. For West Virginia, it is Barrier, Harmon, Eisenman, Johnson, and McCutcheon. Here's Barrier. Barrier swings it over to the right. They dump it down. There's a long jumper from Harmon. Off, no good. Rebound, Eisenman. Eisenman got it blocked from behind on a whistle. Our first foul, we had a check at halftime. We had 25 fouls in the first half. So Courtney Eisenman, 6'3", Upper Arlington out of Columbus, Ohio, at the free throw line. It's good, the first one. Been impressed with the development of Eisenman. You know, she's been on our radar for well over a year now. She's got 
probably a dozen schools, as I mentioned before, that are recruiting her actively. But the progress and the progression that she has made uh, here in the past few months is notable. Hit a three earlier, uh, moving very well. You see her being very active on the interior, just getting hands on the ball. You know, never going to be uh, the most athletic kid on the floor, but she, she can definitely uh, be active. Garner with the putback, 6-3, Camden Catholic High, Brittany Garner. There's a long three, McCutcheon in and out, no good, tip fight for the rebound, Harmon gets it. Harmon now swings it back to McCutcheon, McCutcheon now kicks it back out to the top to Johnson, they swing it over the barrier, and now the Harmon, ball movement was there. The ball has energy, move it, swing it along, now long three, Johnson off the back of the rim, no good. Garner gets the rebound. Now the guard has to come back and help her. She had to put it on the floor. Here comes Thornton. Thornton will cross the timeline with 14-33 and counting here in the second half in a nine-point game. Braun guard down the lane. It's no good. Eisenman gets the rebound. And now here's Johnson. Johnson with some pressure up to Harmon. A long jumper, it is short by Eisman. McCutcheon, the smallest thing on the floor, gets the rebound and puts it back and in. It's funny, the big kid shoots a three and the, the, the point guard gets the rebound put back. It's kind of backwards, but it works out. Tyron McCutcheon, 2016, 5'6", out of Washington, West Virginia, and Parkersburg South. Leah Stevens moves back. Stevens gonna come and set it up. She's being worked on by Barrier. Stevens gonna drive, shot up, no. She got foul, and she should be going to the free throw line, Aaliyah Stevens. Free throw, no good for Aaliyah Stevens, rolled off to the right. Lee will come in and Wagner will come in. Summer Pierce and Braungart will go out for Philly Freedom. Free throw front iron, no good. A fight for it, scuffle for it on the floor and let's see, it will be a foul. Will be a foul, so Philly will keep the ball. Stevens will inbound underneath her own basket on the baseline. 13.35 to go. Substitutions, barrier goes out, and now Gabby Burris checks in. So there's the inbound now. They swing it around. Here comes Gardner. Lee going to take a shot. Headed the key. Good. She stroked it in there. Good. Nice looking jumper there from Lee. Seeing her playing defense is going to be going to get caught out of position. We talked about Lee in the first half, doing the intangible things. Now hitting the face-up jumper. Yep, and she got fired. She committed the foul right there on that play. Eisenman down low, it goes out of bounds. Philly Faithful wanted to traveling out that far from the hoop. Inbounded, now here's Harmon. Harmon now to Johnson, Johnson in Eisenman. Eisenman shot is up, it was blocked, she got it back. Eisenman shot up again, and another whistle. They're just blowing the pee out of the whistle today. Right there, it is. A foul on Garner. Brittany Garner and going to the free throw line is Eisman. 25 fouls in the first half. Five here in the second half. Total, that is. Eisman free throw is good. And as a player, you have to adjust to how the game is called. Yeah. yeah. No matter what level you're on, that's a part of your growth of yeah. basketball as well. Yeah. Very good point, Joel. Eisenman made the free throw. Now they pushed that lead silently all the way back out to 11. Remember, Philly cut it to one, 18 to 17, and then 
a 12-2 run, pushed it out to eight. Now it's out to 11 after it was 10 at the half. We saw this from Philly on Friday. Seemed like they just couldn't get enough cohesion on the offense together, string enough good possessions together, and stops. Rhythm, I guess you would like to say that. Matthews has worked. Thrown by McCutcheon. She had a crossover, had a beat. Now goes down the lane, dumps it off. There's a shot. Up and in good by Thornton. Taylor Thornton. And now, let's see. A foul come back from this trail official. <laughs> Coach Carmen, he's just looking around saying, oh, come on now. Yeah. West Virginia will be inbounding the ball, and it will be Burris. But, you know, at the end of the day, this is the way it's being called, so this is the way it's being called. Pretty much. Now here comes McCutcheon. McCutcheon with the right hand dribble. Nope, not a reach. Now foul on Matthews. And that was Kristen Mayo who's checked into the game. Shaquay Matthews with the fire. The whistles have been heavy here in this contest. 40 to 39. Into you know the backcourt to Burris. Go you, ahead. You know what's funny? I was hearing a Scott Johnson in the previous game. He doesn't like when the fouls are being called, he, even when they're being called on his team. <laughs> he just wants to play. <laughs> yeah. But again, this is this is what you got when you have an evaluation, you know, weekend not not just for the um, not for the players, but also for the officials. You know, everybody's a little bit yeah. amped up, and especially when you got the big man sitting over there in the mm -hmm. chair, and he's sitting in the chair that he brought from the house. It's almost like a portable recliner. So now take it, Thornton going down, got it ripped. McCutcheon ripped her. McCutcheon leading the break up ahead to Holloway. Holloway layup, good. Sydney Holloway, 5'10", out of Morgantown. That's an impressive lay-in right there. Going full speed, being able to gather yourself and then finish. Great push on the break. And the ball go out of bounds. Coach Gardner across the way turns and looks at his bench to see who he can go put in. So he tells Summer Pierce to come check in. And Summer Pierce will come in. And Quay Matthews will check, take a seat. Sequoia Matthews. Inbound there, Stevens, a jumper. It is short, Aaliyah Stevens jumper was short from the short corner. And another whistle to stop the clock. 11.08, 42 to 31. So Lloyd goes out and Garner comes in. Mayo inbounds it, and now here comes McCutcheon. Burr is holding on the left wing, kick out. There's all a three, no, tipped around. Rebound gonna come down to Philly Freeman. Mim on the drive, Mim shot up, no good. Nia Mim puts it back up and in, good. Nia Mim with a good hoop right there for Philly. Her first hoop off the bench and into the scorebook. 10-39 to go, 42-33. This is what you want for Coach Gardner. Go to the bench, find somebody that is hungry, ready to change the momentum, and that's what Mims seems ready to do right now. Missed the free throw, and now foul called on Thornton after Holloway had gotten the rebound. I'm all about the refs being evaluated, but I got to say it, Hemi. This has been the most called game of the seven. Yeah, yeah, and, and that might be right, but these two teams might be playing the most physically uh, of the seven teams. Okay, offensive foul right there on Burris. That's true. That is very true. They have been scrapping now. Yeah, yeah, and both teams are pressing. Yes. Both teams want to play high-pressure defense. So in that scenario, 
you're going to have more fouls regardless of how it's being called. So if you're calling it even extra tight, well, then you end up with 25 fouls exactly. in a particular half. So. 12 fouls so far here in the second half. So we're halfway there on pace. Now here goes Stevens. Stevens all the way down the lane and scored. Aaliyah Stevens, a nice drive. She's got four points and now all of a sudden a timeout, 42 to 35. The lead should go down to seven and Philly Freeman trying to make a push. 10.05 to go right here. It is SUV TV. Out of the timeout, it's a seven-point game. Joel Hill's been back here with you alongside Jonathan Hemingway. It is PSB Tip-Off Classic, the seventh and final championship game here on Championship Sunday. Kick it out to the top is Burris. Burris now McCutcheon, a long three. It is no good. And the ball is going to come back, and here comes Philly moving it. They tried to save it and hit each other down there on that end, a turnover. We're unable to get anything in transition right there. 9.43 to go. Well, the, this part of the game, Coach Gardner and the Philly Freedom Stars seem to be inching the momentum back in their direction now. They've got this thing under double digits, seven points. They rattled off several uh, points in a row, but it's all started on the defensive end, forcing uh, West Virginia Thunder into quick shots and even some turnovers. Next couple of minutes, I think, are going to determine how this game ends up finishing up. Michelle Johnson crosses the line. And a turnover out of bounds. She lost it off of her knee. Good defense there from Thornton. So Wagner is in. Wagner, Stevens, Thornton, Brongart, and Garner for the Philly Freeman. Long three, Bungard, air ball, no good. Rebound to Barrier. Barrier gets it up ahead, Harmon. Harmon back in transition for West Virginia. Now she gives it off. Mayo's layup, no good. Eisenman tried to get the rebound. They tip it and save it. Out of bounds, it will be Philly Freedom Stars basketball. So Philly Freedom right there. They've got it to seven. Have not been that close in a while. 9-12 to go. You're right, and they're getting some good looks. You just got to find ways to convert on more than, than you don't. Bad turnover right there by Thornton. It's a steal by Harmon. Harmon gets it up ahead. Here comes Johnson. Johnson shot up. No, got her own rebound. Stop underneath. Kicks it back out. There's Harmon, a jumper. Good. Shayna Harmon, her first field goal, believe it or not. She's been all over the court today. 5-8 out of Tees Valley. And another foul was called. Forty-four to thirty-five. It's a nine-point game. So now here's Stevens. Aaliyah Stevens going to attack. Goes down the baseline, floats it up, count it, and the foul. Aaliyah Stevens a driving and one. Just made a note in into my notebook. Aaliyah Stevens, slasher. Score could be a combo guard long term. And then I just looked down and noticed she's just a sophomore. Yes. 2017. And and is versatile, good. Different. Whoa, whoa, we have a technical foul now. Who's the technical on? Stevens will go to the free throw line. 44-37, note this, missed the free throw. 
So that was the one free throw. Now here comes the two technicals. Man, do you know how big a possession this could have been? It still could be. He'll get the ball back after the technical. Thornton's free throw is good. She'll get one more. So two technicals, huh? No, they let her shoot the one free throw uh, with, with okay. by herself because it was an and one. And now we have a discussion. She should get two free throws and the ball. One more technical coming up for Thornton. Free throw is good. So now they will get the ball. Let's note this. 8.34, the technical was called. It's 44 to 39. They've already gotten four points on this possession and a turnover. They won't get more than four points off of the possession. Johnson gets it up ahead to Barrier. Barrier swings it over to Harmon. Harmon is gonna attack the basket. Use a body, put it up, flip good. Saino Harmon, you see West Virginia, the Thunder just didn't let that bother them. They pushed it right on out to seven just that quick. Thornton on the left, dumps it down low. Here's a spin big body move by Garner, a three second. Stayed in there too long, didn't know what she wanted to do. Three second violation, we'll go back this way. Let me say this, Shayna Harmon has had a, a very solid weekend. We saw the passing and the distributing in the first half and now she's come through and Scored a couple of buckets right on time. Shot is up, floating good by Lexi Barrier. What I liked about that floater was she put a little bit of air underneath it, not only to get it over the outstretched hands, but to give the shot a chance to go in. Good touch there by Barrier. Five of 11, five, excuse me, 5'11 out of Irontown. And she has now up to seven points. 7.26 to go, clock moving now. Lead all of a sudden went back up to nine. Shot up, no. A shoe came off, and Summer appears to be going to the free throw line. And you, you can see what Coach Garner's trying to do here with Courtney Eisenman on the bench for West Virginia. Gabby Burris is having to guard the post player. And, and, and no offense to Gabby, but that, that's a mismatch, especially when you got Brittany Garner who is projecting to be one of the top post players in the class of 2018. You see the footwork, the size, everything else. Burris was just no match down there. Even though they didn't get the, the shot to fall, oftentimes a good look right there will open up offensive rebound opportunities a, as you just saw. Here's free throw lefty. Splish, splash in the net. Eight point game, they keep flirting with this thing, cut it down to five, then it went up to nine, now it's back up to eight. And had them a four point possession, could have been a six point possession, could have been a seven point possession. Free throw is good. So Pierce sits up there and sinks two free throws in a row. She's got six on the night now. Now here's Johnson. Johnson is into the full court. Michelle Johnson swings it over to the left to Hall. Hall now to Barrier. Barrier being worked on by Lee. Kick it out. Hall off that screen. A three. Back iron. Hill of the rim. No good. A turnover. Barrier. A pass. The Harmon. She stopped. Traveling violation. Didn't have enough gum on the bottom of the shoe when she went to the stop. And it's a turnover with 6.56 to go, 48 to 41. Swing it to the left, there's Stevens. Stevens gets it down. They get it inside the Mims and a foul, and the foul is on Burris. Burris just seems to be a magnet right now for for these fouls. They, they like calling number 41. And she's got this look of wonderment on her face, like what, what am I doing right here? So I 
tend to agree a little bit. Good looking shot though, though by uh, Mims. Yeah, Mims is now at the line. That's her third point. It's cut it to six. Now they're gonna get it right back to five. They've been hanging around and hanging around. Two good looking free throws. She made them both. She's got four points, 6.45 to go, a five-point game, 48-43. Swing it over to the left, Hall holds it. Now kick it out high to Harmon. Harmon now being guarded by Stevens. Stevens comes out, tries to get a count. She gets a foul. And a foul called on Philly. And that'll be their eighth foul. So let's see. Stevens is going to go out. Aaliyah Stevens is going to go out. Harmon, Harmon in, layup good. Just beat Matthews, who came in off the bench. Harmon just beat her to the basket just like that off of the muscle, 50 to 43. That's a classic West Virginia sideline out of bounds play right there. Gets the back screen and the easy land. Shot is no good, and now going up, Lloyd trying to draw the foul and will draw the foul. Philly is in the bonus for the rest of the game. Now the one and one bonus. So each non-shooting foul is one and one. Each shooting foul is two shots. The free throw is good. Made them both. 50 to 45. It's down to five again now. And we're coming up on six minutes. Barrier swings it over to Harmon. Harmon keeps it in bounds and puts it on the floor. Harmon stop. Bounce pass to Burris. Burris cutting. Shot up. No. She'll shoot two with 5.57 to go. Again, the passing of Shayna Harmon. It's been impressive. She's had her a pretty good game. Not a lot scoring-wise, only five points. But like you say, the, the defense and the passing. Burris at the free throw line. She'll be shooting two. A lot, of, a lot of times what we talk about, you know, with our evaluations, you know, about kids is are they impactful? Okay, they might have the measurables. You know, they might be able to measure up on the tape and, you know, things like that. But do they impact the game? And... Although Shayna Harmon, as you mentioned, only a couple of buckets, she's impacted this game with her passing, sometimes with the assists, other times with the hockey assists. Just been a solid game uh, for number 24. Philly just can't crack below five. Two free throws are good there from Burris, and the lead goes back up to seven. And a timeout has been called by Philly Freeman. 5.43 to go, 52.45. PSB Tip-Off Classic live from Swanee, Georgia, and Swanee Sports Academy. Joel Hillsman, Jonathan Hemingway live on SUV TV. Welcome you back to Swanee Sports Academy. The Philly Freedom Stars with the basketball. They're trailing 52 to 45. They're in the gray, moving right to left. West Virginia Thunder with that lead. They are in the white. Dump it down in low. Mims looks, looks, now goes back. Paul was tipped out of bounds, and it will stay with the Philly Freedom Stars. And Coach Scott Johnson didn't agree. Now the refs get together, and they change the call, and it will go over to West Virginia. Good job there by the officials. One official didn't see it. The other one had a better look at it. Got it right. Got together and talked about it. Hall with a nice pass to Holloway. Count it. And the foul. The lead goes up to nine again. Uh, that's, that's unfortunate for Philly right there. They got caught sleeping a little bit in their full court press, and they 
Was that Harmon that made the, the long bomb right there? On the pass, I yeah. think so, yeah. Free throw is no good. Sidney Holloway made the hoop. Lee inbounds it, gives it up ahead to Wagner. Wagner into the forecourt, goes behind the back, dribbling with the left hand, now swings it over to Thornton. Thornton now kicks it to the top. Here's Lee. Lee swings it back to Wagner. Wagner left hand dribble belt high now to Thornton. Thornton holds it, now moves with the left hand, crosses it back to the right. There's Stevens back in. Stevens holding, holding, and looking, and holding. She had a count on her. Now they kick it back. Stevens looking, and let's see. We got a three-second three second violation on Gardner, and Coach Gardner is upset across the way that Stevens was holding and holding and holding while Garner was fighting for a position, but in the paint too long. And as a guard, you've got to know that. You've got to be aware, and that's why it's so tough to play the guard position sometimes because there's so much to be aware of. But nevertheless, that was a good offensive possession because they got it from side to side, but you've got to know what is – what is your priority? It's to get it to your big girl on the interior. Yep, and everything was side to side and outside of the perimeter. Nothing was below the three-point line on that particular possession. 4.38 to go. Nine-point game, and Hall is at the free throw line. Casey Hall, 5'7", Southwebster, missed the free throw. We've had 20 fouls called now here in the second half. 4.30 to go. Stevens across the timeline. Philly got it down to five, it went back up to nine. They got it down to five, it's back up to nine. Thornton puts it on the floor, driving, not there. There's Wagner, a jumper, it's good. They are trying to hang in that, hang in the game. Sydney Wagner with her first field goal, she's got four. Jumper, shot up, off, no good, rebound. There's Hall scooping layup, no, got fouled. And she will go to the free throw line, foul on Lloyd. You know, I'm not sure that I can co-sign on that quick jumper that Hall just took, but I do like the fact that, that she stayed after it, got the offensive rebound. And, you know, even though Hall is, you know, what you would call a, a spot-up jump shooter, she's showing the energy today that she can affect the game in a multitude of areas other than just spotting up around the arc. Six points for her today as she strokes both free throws. 56 to 47. Nine point game still. Swing it to Wagner. They try to dump it down in there. The Garner out of bounds. It will stay down on this end. Uh, I'd describe Gabby Burris as a prospect of versatility. You're seeing the versatility, right? They're, they're asking her to guard one of the best post players in the country, regardless of class. She's moving her feet and she's doing the best that she can do. Looking, looking, Stevens gets it in. McCutcheon tipped it. Wagner stayed with it, out of bounds, and it will stay Philly Freedom Express ball. Philly Freedom stars basketball. And Coach Garner now moves back up. Got him here in this championship game. They're competing. This uh, Sydney Wagner kid, number one in the gray. Really like her a lot, just a sophomore. Real skilled kid, you see her make the reversal pass. Garner on the glass, no. And they call an offensive foul on Brittany Garner. And a technical foul has been called on the Philly Freedom Stars, Coach Garner. I didn't see an offensive foul there. I'm sorry, I, I didn't either. It looked like she got the offensive rebound and got pulled down by the arm. That, that's what I saw. Yeah. 3.40 to go, 56 to 47. And the refs have called the technical on Philly. And the refs now are getting together and they're talking about it. I, I didn't see an offensive foul. I didn't either. I, did, I, don't know, I don't know where the offensive foul would have come from. I, yeah. I saw her getting a rebound, and then she was falling to the floor. If you're falling to the floor, nine times out of ten, you didn't commit an offensive foul. So obviously, the technical is fitting the stand. First free throw on the technical is good by Tyron McCutcheon. Second one is good as well. 
10 points for McCutcheon. And now the offensive foul stands, and West Virginia will be taking it out with Harmon. Harmon to McCutcheon. Long three ball out of the corner. No good by Hall. Easy put back layup. And by Shayna Harmon, offensive rebound and put back. Lead now goes to 13. Twice Philly got it down to five. Twice it went up to nine, and now it's gone up to 13. Well, the one thing that we can say about the officiating, it has been tight both ways. I think both benches have gotten technicals. Yep. <laughs> you know, so it's it's not been lopsided in, in that way. But, you know, in, in the end, these games are about the players. It's about their development. And uh, ultimately for this tournament, it's about the exposure that they are getting. Yep. Indeed. And, uh, you know, in, in this type of situation, I think that it's important. You know, if, if I were a coach, if I were a parent, make sure that you tell your kid to uh, make sure that you represent yourself in the way that you uh, could be proud of, you know, in 24 hours. Even if it's an emotional situation, you know, you've got to be able to show that maturity uh, to, to handle anything that you feel that's unfair or not. And uh, and uh, here we are. So going to shoot a couple of free throws. I think we've got somebody that just fouled out. Yeah, I think someone just fouled out. Six fouls and you're fouled out. And it was Andrea Lloyd who fouled out. So 60 to 47, free throw up. McCutcheon is in good. She has 11, 61 to 47. We have had 49 fouls called in the game. Free throw is no good. Rebound comes down to Wagner. Wagner gives it over to Thornton. Thornton swings it over to the right side to Pierce. Summer Pierce is going to drive on the baseline. She went up and a jump ball. Jump ball call, and it will be West Virginia's basketball. Coach Scott Johnson continuing to coach his troops. 3-0-2. Plenty of time, really. 14 points, not that hard to make up. And a foul is called here. And this foul is on Thornton, the block. And the foul now is our 50th in the game. So Tyron McCutcheon is at the free throw line and she will shoot the one and one and it's good. The first one is good. Well, the good thing is um, college coaches getting to see how these kids can shoot free throws. Yeah, we will see the free throw shooting. Thornton goes out, Mims comes in. Free throw is good. Yeah, as you say, it has been tight both ways. And sometimes, and not saying that fouls aren't committed, but the flow of the game, you know, if the whistle is that quick, it can affect it. But as neither here nor there, Summer Pierce's shot is no good. Pierce shot up again, no good. And a foul, and we'll go to the free throw line. So Summer Pierce will be going to the free throw line. 2.42 to go. So Pierce taking her time, going through a free throw routine, shot up and in good. Second free throw by Pierce is good as well. 14 point deficit, 63 to 49. Here's Mayo, Mayo swings it across. There's a jumper by Hall, it is good. Foot was on the line, a long two for Casey Hall. 2016-5-7 out of Southwestern. Nice drop off, Garner in the paint. Shot is up, it is no good over Eisenman. They tip and fight for it. She put it up off the window, good. The press is on, a turnover. Out of bounds, it'll be Philly Freedom Stars basketball. 2-10 to go. 
So if they have one push in them, they may have to do it right now, 65-51. Inbound from Stevens. Stevens to Wagner, now back to Stevens. She's picked up by Johnson, now out between the rings. Swing it over to the left. Braungart has it, looking. They dump it down low into Gardner. Gardner was pushed by Eisenman, and a whistle and a foul there. So Gardner will be going to the free throw line. We are under two minutes, 156. Remaining in championship game number seven of the day. We'd like to thank you all for joining us and using the hashtag PSB Tip Off Classic on SUV TV. PeachStateBasketball.com, BrandonClayScouting.com. Garner will get another free throw. No good. And what do we have? Technical foul, and we have had an ejection. Technical foul has been called on Scott Johnson. His team is up 14, his second technical, and he has been ejected from the game. And now Coach Johnson goes down to shake the hand of Philly Freedom Stars head coach and so Thornton will sit here and shoot technical free throws we have had three technicals in this game all three of them on the bench and two on coach Johnson and he's been ejected from the game Thornton sits there and hits both free throws 65 to 53 there is some form of life in there possibly Stevens will inbound it Aaliyah Stevens so it's Stevens and Thornton on the floor, along with Brongart, Pierce, and Wagner. Small ball indeed. Stevens, a long three. It's an air ball, no good. And it'll be out of bounds, and it'll be West Virginia's ball. Pass was deflected and stolen away. So a long lead pass up ahead, Stevens gets it, puts it on the floor, going through the lane, sweeping layup, no good. Skying for the rebound is Holloway, and she is fouled. One twenty-nine remaining, and we'll walk down and shoot more free throws on this end, 65 to 53. One twenty-nine remaining in our final championship game, game seven. And as we had logo row, coaches row, just a, a plethora of coaches come in, in and out of the gym today. Ohio is still here, Kentucky's here, Georgia's here, free throw is good. Rutgers was here, C. Vivian Stringer was here, Stanford was here with Tar Vanderveer. Once again, another excellent, outstanding event put on by Peach State Basketball and the PSB evaluators. I'm jealous of you guys. Holloway made both free throws, pushed the lead out to 14. We come up on 80 seconds to go. Mim, a long three, good. She dropped that in there. Nia Mim, a three, and a timeout is called. So Nia Mim, with some timely baskets, had two free throws earlier, add in her deuce from that, and now that three, she's got seven. 67-56, 11-point game with 1.15 to go. Well. There might be a couple of more fouls that are called. And in that keeping track after both of them hit the double bonus. That's how I know I'm accurately correct in that. A reach in and a steal. Thornton puts it up, count it. 
And now look at that. All of a sudden, it's down to nine with 63 seconds. Does Philly have some form of a push in them? There, there's a pass, an errant pass. They get it up ahead. Here's Burris. Burris may get the layup. No, a foul. Going to the line now to shoot two. So Burris will be going to the free throw line. I think the foul was on Summer Pierce. Free throw by Burris is good. Gabby Burris, 5'11", Liberty Union. And Lloyd comes in. Free throw, no. Rebound, comes down. Holloway shot up, no whistle, jump ball. Burris has lived at the line today, seven free throws. Seven of her nine points have came from the free throw line. Ten point game with 50 seconds. Matthews is in, and now here's Thornton. Thornton, the one attack the lane, quickly goes up. She was fouled, fouled by Mayo. And Thornton will be at the line with 43 and nine, 10 seconds. 68 to 58. Free throw is good. Just got to thank everybody that's still watching right now. If you're watching this game, you are a dedicated fan. I'm trying to tell you. Yeah. This, yeah. yeah. 68 to 59. Thank you for watching all day. But if you could kind of feel the vibe along press row and the crowd over here, it's like, they may close before we finish this game. <laughs> and Swanee Sports Academy, it stays open a lot. The pressure is on. The free throw is cut it to eight. They may get a turnover here. They will get a turnover with 30 seconds. Coach Garner, I'm not mad at Coach Garner, though. I coach it all the way to the end. No doubt. They did, they've given you this. No doubt. The story is the fouls, though. Not saying that they don't happen, but the amount and the volume they happen and when they've been called a long three. Air ball, no good. Off, out of bounds. It will go to West Virginia with 21 and 3, 10 seconds. And now all of a sudden. Burris will inbound it. She inbounds it in. The Mayo, Mayo now going to give it off to Holloway. Holloway kicks it back with 13 seconds. I think they're just going to let him go. Mayo stops. She can't travel with the basketball now. She, she moved. get called for three seconds. Yeah, she should have gotten called for three seconds. She walked away, and that'll be the final. 68-60 to 60 West Virginia Thunder with the victory over the Philly Freedom Stars to end PSP's tip-off classic, 150 schools and seven championships here on Championship Sunday. For Joel, for Jonathan Hemingway, Brandon Clay, Chris Watkins, and all the staff at PSB and Peach State Basketball, and to my producers, Lisa and Marcus of SUV TV. We'll see you next time down the road. Thank you for joining us. Joel Hillsman, so long, everybody.